working EMS or any medical profession, it is a lot more rare to come across an infant or pediatric cardiac arrest. But as EMS and medical professionals, we have to be ready for that call when it comes. That is our job. That's what we're talking about today. We're starting with BLS. So this is Pediatric Infant Children BLS Basic Life Support. Okay, going over age recommendations. So the first thing we do is scene safety. We cannot help anyone if the scene is not safe. So it's safe, we enter. Okay, now what are we gonna do? First, we gotta check responsiveness. If the patient is not awake, they're not speaking, they're not responsive to any painful stimulus, they are deemed unresponsive. They're not moving at all, right? Now, AHA will tell us a few things. When I watch this, get help, call 911, get an AED. Now, if we're working EMS and we're taking a BLS class, what does that mean? We are EMS. <laughs> we are 911. Every EMT has an AED and we are the help, <laughs> right? So we are usually at minimum that two person crew that's gonna go to emergency, right? So we kind of checked that off, but I just want you to know the steps of it all. And also if you're, you know, a bystander out or civilian out and you're you know, to seeing someone in front of you, this is it, okay? So the next thing we have here is check breathing and pulse, and we have up to 10 seconds to do that. Now, some interesting notes here with pediatrics. I wrote them out here for you. Now, we're talking about infants in this little series of video here. Infant means one year and under. That's what we're gonna consider an infant, all right? Now, if we're talking above one year, now we're getting into what I might call children, right? And we have children that are older, and we have a small child, okay? So that's what we are kind of thinking as we're talking about these things. Plant that in your head. So for a child age, we look at the carotid pulse. We're still gonna check the carotid pulse, okay? Now for infants, we have the brachial pulse. That is on the inside of the upper arm. That's your brachial pulse, okay? Now, this is where we're gonna do our pulse check. We have up to 10 seconds to figure out, are they unresponsive? Are they breathing? Is there a pulse? If it is no pulse, no breathing, they are unresponsive, they're in cardiac arrest. Now we jump down here. The next step now is to start CPR and attach the AED that we have as EMS, okay? So yeah, you're a two person crew. So we have one provider starting CPR, compressions, and the other attaching the AED, great. Now, here's what we have for our different ratios. A one rescuer, okay, what if you're by yourself? That is gonna be 30 to two, okay? Now, two rescuers, like a normal EMS crew going to a call together, then we look at 15-2. This is the big difference from pediatric and adults. So any adult patient, any scenario, 30 and two. But pediatrics, infants, children, if there's one rescuer, it's 30, and if it's two, it's 15. You gotta remember that. They're gonna get asked about that. This is why I put a big circle on it, and these notes here are very important too. Next thing is, well, the compression technique is different from adult to children to infants. So we, get, we have a range here, and I'm gonna talk in a little bit about how deep we go with the compressions and how we know if they're effective. And we'll get to that, especially with children, it's important. But let me just give you some things to remember. Infants, we have a two finger technique, okay? So what are we just pressing the two fingers down on the chest, option one. Option two is a two finger encircling technique. We are placing your hands around the infant and doing a two finger encircling technique, okay? Same deal, they both work, depends on which one you wanna do, all right? Now, the AHA says, okay, if you're a two rescuer, uh, encircling your hands may be better, but it allows you to do whichever one you're comfortable doing, right? They're both there for you. Now, children, you may be able to get ahead, again, with a small child, maybe they're on the border, maybe like a toddler age, you may, you know, two years old, right? You may consider doing, you know, one-handed CPR. That force might be enough, but it's still recommended to do two hands. So it's up to the provider to decide what's gonna be enough force to get the job done, which is gonna be two hands or one hand in children, okay? So you have two different options. Again, they're giving you two different options here. The goal is to make sure that you're getting deep enough and fast enough. So that is the big goal here. When we're talking about CPR. Now, down here, after we've done our 
our cycle CPR after two minutes, we move down here. Well, now the AED is talking to us, right? And it's gonna tell us, are we gonna shock the patient? Are we not? Are we going back to CPR? So let's talk about that. So you're gonna shock as needed. You're gonna follow all the AED prompts. The AED is gonna kind of coach you and help you working this code. And then remember, it's two minute cycles of CPR, whether you're doing 30 and two or 15 and two for BLS. So what exactly does the American Heart Association call high quality CPR? These are some of the key findings you gotta know. And a lot of these are gonna be test questions. So first, we wanna start chest compressions within 10 seconds. So we approach that patient, we're checking for responsiveness. We have 10 seconds to decide, is it cardiac arrest or not? Are they breathing? Do they have a pulse? Yes or no? Remember those locations we talked about, right? Okay. Now push hard and fast. The rate is gonna be 100 to 120 per minute with our compressions. That is our goal for every patient. Now, I put a little star here for you. Why? This is gonna be a major test question. Here it is. What is the correct death? What, how deep are we, are we gonna go with the compressions in children versus infants? Now we know in the adult patient, it's at least two inches. Now what about children and infants? Well, in children, you have a little buzzword here. At least one third of the chest, which comes out to be approximately two inches. But this is a key finding, okay? You might not see the two inches on a, on a test, but it, this ends up being the answer. Infants, it's a little different. Same deal, at least one third of the chest, but it's 1.5 inches approximately, okay? So these are little buzzwords you're gonna see on test exams. So now you know it, gotta jot that one down. So we have some extras down here that I wanna talk about as well. First is allowing the chest to recoil after each compression. With ventilations, we want no excessive ventilations. And we also wanna make sure that we have good chest rise and fall with our ventilations. Down here, we have minimizing interruptions with CPR and limiting that to under 10 seconds, right? Now, obviously there's times where we have to stop CPR. Well, if we're gonna shock the patient, we gotta stop compressions for a second, let, let the AED do its thing, right? We're following the AED prompts, but we really wanna limit those interruptions. We're also talking about here when we switch compressors. So make sure like, you know, you're talking about the, the triangle of AHA, right? The, the compressor, when we're about to switch, it should be a fast switch. That's very important, okay? Now, one thing I need to write down here that I, I mentioned in my adult video is same here at pediatrics. Practice, practice, practice when one of your compressions. But also, very important, is the seal when you're delivering the BVM ventilations, right? And remember, we're gonna use a different BVM, the adult, pediatric, infant BVM, different volumes of air, a lot smaller lungs, a lot smaller chest, right? So that's important. Work on your seal. Work on getting a really good seal. There shouldn't be air popping out the sides of your BVM. Here are some more key points. When we have a child in cardiac arrest that is under eight years old, we're gonna place child AED pads in order to deliver the appropriate amount of energy. These are placed from front to back directly across from each other versus a different placement we're using adult pads. If the patient is over eight years old, we use adult pads because we're trying to gauge how much energy we're gonna use with the AED, okay? So remember, use of child pads, child pads equals eight years old and under, front to back placement versus the adult placement, okay? Next here we have ventilation rates. So ventilation rates. BLS, which means we have a BLS airway. If I say BLS airway, that means basic life support. That means you're ventilating with, you know, an OPA, an NPA, and a BVM. That's what we're talking about. A bag valve mask. It's a BLS airway. If there's one rescuer on scene, it's 30 compressions, two ventilations. If it's two rescuers, which is basically EMS, then it's 15 and two with a BVM in place. Now let's say the paramedic arrives on scene and now they insert an advanced airway. May it be an LMA, may it be an eye gel, may it be a King LT, may it be a combi tube, may it be an intubation, endotracheal intubation, any sort of ALS airway, it's not a BVM, 
We consider that advanced airways in place. Now we do continuous compressions, unless the paramedic has stopped for a second, because we're gonna shock the patient, right? And then we're gonna, you know, obviously do our switch off with every two minute cycles. Okay, new person comes in, but the breathing changes to one breath every two or three seconds. Now, why is it not six seconds like an adult? Because the normal respiratory rate of an adult is, let's just say, for example, 12 to 20. Now, in children, the rate is higher, and in infants, it gets even higher, right? So that is why it's every two to three seconds we do a breath and we're continuous compressions. That's that. Now, something important to know about, what if you're working a pediatric cardiac arrest and you're having a hard time with the airway, with BVM? What, what can you do? Two things I want you to check for. One, check your head position. You obviously, there's no trauma involved. You do a head tilt chin lift, but we gotta be careful that we don't bring that neck back way too much and get the head off that neutral sniffing position, especially with children, because if we hyperextend the neck, we might actually block out the airway in children, okay? Due to the size of the child. So the big key here in one sense, don't overextend the neck. It can block the airway. So when in doubt, try to make it more of a neutral position, okay? That is number one. The second thing, like I said earlier, check your seal. Check your BVM seal. There shouldn't be air flipping out the sides, okay? And one quick tip I can give you, if you have enough rescuers to do it, you can actually do like a two-handed BVM technique and have somebody else squeeze the bag. By clicking in the first link in the description, you get lifetime access to my Video Vault program. The Video Vault includes over 480 videos of content and now holds over 2,000 National Registry Practice Test questions. Also includes some really awesome bonuses like worksheets, drug cards that are pre-filled out all for you, community group access to ask me questions and audio files when you are on the go. The video vault will find you no matter where you're at, whether you're an EMR, EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic student. And my students use this whether you are getting ready for school, in school right now, or getting ready to go pass your national registry exams. So click the first link in the description right now and get yourself lifetime access to the Video Vault today. I'll see you there.